Welcome to... Oh, I need to accept it now. Oh, man. Uh, welcome to GUI and in web browsers uh, for 11th of December 2019. We are short stop this week and we probably won't be this time next for the next two weeks due to like holidays and uh, people taking time off, but we will be back in January. Um, I was not sure if we will make this week's call, but there's one thing I wanted to show and Hugo joined us. So I'm not alone. Um, <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to briefly uh, mention uh, recent changes in user interface of IPFS Companion. Um, it's related to discussion in IPFS uh, docs repo around a like there was, there's like a general discussion about hosting web apps on IPFS and challenges related to related re relative paths and then um, things like uh, origin separation. It's a bit long, and if someone don't want to read everything, there is a short summary, I believe, here with decisions we've made. Um, long story short, um, on the companion side of things, hi Jim, uh, uh, on the companion side of things, we started experiment around experience when someone is visiting DNS link website. So DNS link is this uh, convention of adding DNS TXT record with IPFS path. And our browser extension is able to detect that uh, there is a IPFS path for the domain you are trying to visit. And we are able to load page from IPFS instead of original HTTP server, which is uh, pointed by the A record. Um, so historically, we've been always redirecting to local gateway. And in the latest uh, beta of IPFS Companion, we've made a short experiment to change that behavior. So for that one release, we better release, we stop redirecting to local gateway by default. And instead we stayed on the original HTTP server. Uh, we've added additional user interface for uh, opening a website uh, in a new tab from local gateway. Um, there were some concerns around that, mostly about the fact that we stopped uh, kind of distributing content on the initial load. Uh, I proposed uh, mitigation. Um, I believe it's linked here. So uh, I proposed the mitigation that preloaded uh, data of visited websites in the background. Uh, so if the original HTTP server fails, uh, there would be a copy on local uh, on local server. Uh, so we had a design review call around that and we sort of uh, decided uh, that we've been doing what uh, this redirect local gateway for a long time and uh, subdomain gateways are on the horizon, which uh, will solve the security issue we wanted to solve here. And uh, it does not make much sense to break the current user experience uh, in the intermediate uh, in that time period before today and like the beginning of 2020 when we will land subdomain gateways um, so that's a long story short uh, we uh, flip the switch back so we will continue redirecting to local gateway however uh, I reworked the user interface a little bit uh, to make it easier to basically disable all in IPFS integrations for a specific website. So if uh, in the past we there was uh, there was a user interface element, I believe I have it here. Let me find it. Uh, no, I don't have it. Maybe I do. I no. Um, Anyway, there was uh, in this position, there was a toggle for enabling or disabling redirects for a specific website. And in this PR, uh, I'm changing it 
to be more generic. So we not only start, uh, toggle redirects, we also stop all other integrations. Because in the behind the scenes, we inject some content scripts. We sometimes change the DOM uh, depending on experiment user enabled. Uh, there is a window IPFS object injected uh, to pages to give access to IPFS APIs. And this one, we want to provide one toggle which disables all those integrations. Uh, and that's basically it. it uh, under active tab section. So it's enabled by default on every page, but you can with one click uh, both disable redirects to local gateway and shut down all IPFS integrations. So if you find that IPFS companion is breaking a website or you want to see how website works without IPFS integration, you should be able to uh, take advantage of this new user interface. And if you like disable uh, this redirect on a website which is b uh, backed by DNS links. In this case, uh, it's docs IPFS IO. You can see it's enabled by default, but when you disable it, it opens page from the original HTTP server, but gives you additional option to open a copy on local at on local gateway in a new tab. Uh, and there is uh, there are additional options. This entire DNS link section on preferences screen to uh, to tweak the behavior. So by default, we load websites from Captain Gateway, but you can disable it. We added this warning, so at least we tell people about possible risks. And if you disable it, you can still uh, preload visited pages. So I think that's flexible enough for everyone. And the important part is that the default state after initial install, like the clean install experience is the same as it was before. So we don't break um, the default path with which uh, Molly was mostly worried uh, during the call. Um, I think that's it uh, on my end uh, regarding this uh, change. It's not merged yet. The, I linked the PR in the, in the notes. Uh, so if you find that uh, the language or the user interface could be improved. Uh, comment on the issue. I want to like uh, merge it uh, this week, release to beta channel, and then publish to uh, to stores. Uh, it takes time to publish to stores. I did not have it on my like agenda, but I think it's worth mentioning that it's getting like hard, maybe not harder, but it takes more time to publish through Chrome Web Store. Um, let me, yes, let me find it. Because I always try to be very transparent about our inter interactions with both Mozilla and Google uh, uh, around the browser extensions. And like it's a constant battle recently on Chrome Web Store front. Uh, this time they rejected our beta release for some reason uh, with like canned response. Uh, basically, uh, I, I, I did not get like human response. It's just like automated system. Uh, they've updated some rules and then uh, our extension got uh, rejected, but it's like still available on the, uh, on the store. It's just like they rejected the latest version of our beta. Maybe because the screenshot is like pixelized for a reason, so people don't install like the beta versions by mistake. Um, I need to like do the proper uh, description uh, screenshots. Maybe that will make them happy. But it's uh, it's a problem if someone wants to test beta channel on uh, Chrome. They need to like manually install it from. Uh, from sources or use the um, pre-built version attached to to release under assets here. Um, all right, that's me. If you have any questions related to any topics, I'm glad to discuss or answer. If you have your topics, feel free. We are like free, pretty short stuff this week, so. I added a new agenda item. Oh. Go on.
uh, not this one, this one. Hmm. What, what are, what's, which screen are you seeing? Are you seeing the agenda? I'm seeing the agenda. Okay. So I finally managed to release the, the a new version of CTL, which actually was the first uh, 1.0.0 ever in our repos. So you can see the, the readme. Uh, this is actually a, a breaking change release. A uh, bunch of stuff which was changed. Um, everything is more or less explained in the release notes, and also the README documentation has been um, updated. So I'm go just going to go through a couple of things. So um, CTL was a pretty old uh, repo, a bunch of um, things kind of started to be bloated inside uh, some legacy code and this was giving us uh, a bunch of problems and one specifically was that we we couldn't specify which version of uh, JS IPFS package or uh, JS IPFS client uh, HTTP client uh, was being used when we spawn nodes from using uh, IPFS DCTL. Uh, so now we, we are able to do it. We have a, we had a, um, also other problems, but this one was pretty uh, critical for us um, because this package is used all over the tests in probably all the repos in the JS IPFS um, org. So some of the improvements um, are these, as you, as you can see, uh, it's probably much faster now. The errors are much better. Uh, we have debugs, debug logs everywhere. <clears throat> we have a we have a way to to the factory now can actually spawn several nodes and manage several nodes. So you can in one go uh, clean all of them. You can also specify some default, some options for each um, future spawn nodes, and also some overrides per type. Uh, we have three types, uh, the Go daemon, JS daemon, or a JS in process uh, node. So you can specify overrides uh, for each type, which are all merged everywhere properly, and everything should be, um, much safer to deal with. Uh, we can also um, init start and set config in one go, at least in JS IPFS. Uh, when I say one go is basically using one, only one child process, uh, while uh, before we needed to use like three or four. Um, and actually, uh, the, the utility functions uh, now work in the browsers, which they didn't uh, previously, and we didn't know, um, and also work in, in web workers. The disposable node is much safer now. It actually cleans them itself uh, in the browser. Uh, the, the coverage was also improved. So for the new things, the, the top-level API, um, all, Basically, we we have one new method, which is the create controller. Uh, so we have CTL is made of like two or three uh, top level methods, and internally we have a factory and can controllers. Controllers are basically a wrapper around uh, um, a IPFS node or daemon, uh, and a factory can manage several con controllers. So we have a, a create controller method, which is uh, spawns the controller directly. So we basically, it's just a shortcut to instantiate a factory and call spawn. Uh, we have a create factory method, uh, which uh, has, a, um, as you can see, a secondary parameter to override options per type. 
Um, so this changed how, so basically we had create and we changed it to create factory just to be more explicit. And also the options um, that we sent to create factory uh, or previously create also change. You can see some of the differences here. Um, as you can see here, we can now specify exactly uh, which HTTP, um, which uh, IPFS HTTP client we want to use and which JS IPFS um, package we want to use. We need to um, specify a reference and a path uh, because of one specific reason. Um, uh, CTL uh, handles remote um, nodes. So if you want to start the JS daemon from the browser, uh, obviously you can't, right? You cannot spawn a process inside a browser. So you need to have a, a little server that CTL provides that you, you connect to and you tell that server spawn me a JS daemon. So this is called a remote controller. And a ref is basically a, just a require of a specific package. And um, when dealing with remote controllers, we cannot send the reference to the remote controller, right? So we need to send it, uh, send um, a path. But also, when you we bundle for the browser, we need to have a, um, a, an explicit require. So the bundler uh, includes that package that we, we, we want to use. So we, we need also need a, a, a reference. We need a, a reference to be equal to a require, a specific, a, a specific require, explicit require. So that's the reason that we, we need to have both, and not just ref or path. We need to have both so we can work in the browser and we can also work in, um, in like node environments, like Electron or whatever. The same goes to the other one. Um, and everything else is uh, straightforward. We also, um, pre previously, we had a, a spawn method in the factory that accepted um, these options, um, which are kind of uh, strange um, because they mimic some of the IPFS options and others don't, it's pre, uh, it was pretty strange. So now what you send to the spawn, you send it basically the control options, all, all the controller options, but you can specify IPFS options, which, is, uh, which are exactly the same as the ones that the IPFS constructor accepts. So there's no like different option going around and users need to understand one set of options and another set of options. It's all the same. It's everything that JSFS accepts, um, the factory spawn also accepts. Uh, we did also, um, we now have a, a specific um, option to set the, the IPFSD uh, CTL to test mode. Uh, and we uh, only apply some of the default configuration uh, that we uh, always applied previously. We only apply it when we are in test mode. And also the default others option was removed because it, it was just like, it was superfluous. Because we, uh, we now only apply the, some of the configuration when we are in test mode because we really need it for tests. We don't need to have the default adders uh, options to adjust confusing for the user. And internally in the, in the controller, we also removed a couple of methods um, uh, because they were needed and they were like public uh, accept, accept, uh, accessible. And one other change is the, um, the, the, um, the adders now, uh, Actual, actually take into account the environment. So now we can, and that's why I was able to enable a bunch, uh, a bunch of uh, browser tests in JSFS and uh, JSHTP client that were skipped. With the, this new version, I was able to enable all, almost all the tests um, in the browser. And they were skipped for one simple reason. We couldn't connect 
um, when we when a test needed needs to connect several nodes to do some stuff um, in the browser, all of those tests were not uh, enabled uh, because TL didn't didn't set the proper uh, addresses, and now it does. So everything is uh, wired up. So remote nodes, open web sockets, uh, uh, enable web sockets server, so the browsers can connect to remote nodes and everything is properly wired and the connectivity in, can happen. The only uh, situation where we, can, we cannot do uh, uh, connect uh, and that's by design is when we have or by it's by design or limitation we can call it limitation of a browser when we have two in process browser nodes they cannot connect to each other because we have no way inside the browser to connect two nodes um, everything else uh, it works and this made all the tests much uh, easier um, to handle the hoax, the before hoax, the, the after hoax, uh, all the spawning, it's much easier to do. All the overriding for specific situations uh, in all of our repos, we have very different um, configurations in specific tests. And we can now have set, we, are, we now have uh, specific places that we can override it. And everything at the end is merged correctly and we are uh, sure what uh, configuration the node uh, is running. Um, so now this is merged, it's is released, and the supporting PRs are uh, being released right now. So yeah, that's about it. It's awesome. So now we can like go over those uh, repos and en enable all those skipped tests in the web browser context. Yeah, it's it, at least uh, GP client and GSAPFS, it's, it's done. It's awesome. We also, so what that, that did uh, was that we started uncovering stuff that we didn't know was failing. Because previously, we were always running uh, inside the interface, uh, the interface core tests. We all were always using nodes of the, or controllers of the same type. And that's why uh, the browser tests, uh, the tests were skipped in the browser because in the browser, when we set like uh, type in process, they couldn't connect by, by design. So we just, someone just skipped the tests. So now what I did, I started uh, uh, kind of specifying a primary secondary um, situation where at least one is in process and the others need to be either uh, JS or Go. So what I uncovered was like, we have pretty, a pretty serious situation uh, where like interrupting between all of these, all of these three types uh, in some combinations just don't work. Um, so there's already issues about it, and we will work on it, and we will fix everything, uh, hopefully as soon as possible. You are muted. I was just send, send, sending compliments in your direction. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I was uh, saying that it's, uh, it's very important that we started running, like, those different contexts because a lot of stuff uh when i was uh, working on like brave a lot of stuff that was passing in tests did not work uh in browser context so uh it will be easier now to catch those uh those cases so yeah almost everything is enabled super fun. it's just a matter of uh, actually uh, actually we only have one situation that i think well we already identified the source of the error uh, where in pubs of subscribing doesn't work in Firefox, specifically in Firefox. And that's the, we have four tests all uh, around subscribing that fail in Firefox. Um, everything else is enabled. All the interface core tests are enabled in HTTP client. Um, in JSAPFS, all of them are enabled. 
HTTP client still has uh, some uh, that are not, but uh, but less than than previously. But JSABFS, all of them are enabled. Uh, besides this specific one um, that we needed to skip, even though Chrome passes, the Firefox still has the issue. But I think we already identified the source, so it should be pretty easy to fix. It's awesome. Yep. Super awesome. Super awesome. Thank you so much. Um, cool. Um, I don't think we have anything else on the agenda. Jim, is there anything you want to chat about? <laughs> not, not, not really. I'm, I'm still getting started doing a connectivity stuff. But yeah, just still at the starting point for that. So, good test ground. All right. All right. Um, I think given the short, we are short staffed, we can uh, take half hour back. Uh, thank you so much for for joining us this week. Um, let me uh, let me maybe share my screen. We, we are at the end of agenda. <laughs> All right. Uh, jokes aside, uh, thanks so much for dialing this week. Uh, I'm pretty sure for the next two weeks we won't have this call. Make double check uh, IPFS community calendar, but I think those are already removed. Uh, the next one will be in January, uh, hopefully with, with more more people uh, after everyone will be refreshed. So uh, see you there. See ya.